Hello, I'm Richard and I'm one of the guides here at Gloucester Cathedral. And this is the second of my talks on the precincts, the area around this wonderful building. Today a cathedral, but in the time of a Benedictine monastery here, it was a wonderful abbey church. I'm standing in Lower College Green. This was where the monks had their great court before the dissolution of the monasteries in 1541 here. This was where pilgrims would have been welcomed. They would have come in through St Mary's Gate. We've talked about St Mary's Gate in the first of my talks. You would have come in possibly as a high status visitor to meet the abbot. The abbot's lodgings initially with this building behind me which you can see with a blue plaque on it. The abbot was an important member of the Benedictine community and it was he who was outward looking towards guests, towards the outside world. And this was a good place for his, his residence. Inside that building today, you can still see his chapel, the chapel that he had built for himself. When the abbey became more and more important, the abbot moved out of there into a palace which we will see in our next talk, just round the corner. And the prior moved in there. After the dissolution of the monastery, there was no abbot, there was no prior, and the dean moved into there. It's quite a large building. And eventually it became a cathedral office, the church office for the diocese and the Dean moved out into Miller's Green. We'll have a look at his house in the next clip. I've moved now to the southwestern corner of what was the Great Court when this was a Benedictine monastery and today is known as Lower College Green. The row of houses that you see in, running along the western wall replaced what was the monastery's stables and after it became a cathedral, the cathedral stables. They fell into disrepair and the dean and chapter decided they would take the uh, offer of uh, some developers and these houses were built. Most interestingly, number 16, which is today the cathedral office, was built as an assembly room, a place where people could come, meet, play badminton, shuttlecock, drink tea, coffee, and it was known for some while as Beaufort House, for it was where the Duke of Beaufort would come when he was in Gloucester. Next to it are two little buildings. One of them is known as the Miskin, the miskin was the rubbish heap right next to the stables. This property is a very interesting property and was built before these houses were. And it showed how the Dean and Chapter, after the restoration of the monarchy, were enhancing this area or making it a desirable area to live in. It's a huge house. It has had many important occupants. Lord Mayor of Gloucester, John Pledel Wilton was there. But most interesting was a young lady, or not a young lady, a lady called Frances Cotton. It was said that she had a wonderful fortune and she used that fortune to enhance the cathedral. But she thought that the spirit of her daughter lived in a robin and she had this robin in a little cage and she was allowed to bring this robin in its cage into the services in the cathedral. To my mind it just shows what the dean and chapter were prepared to accommodate or accept in those days. Further round are two buildings, number seven and eight. Number eight is on the site of the old monastic guest hall. And it has within it 
some of the evidence, some of the old wood of that hall. Behind it would have been the residence or it would have been the accommodation for the pilgrims. Next to it, number seven, the big house there, which has been used for years as accommodation for uh, the clergy, was where the granary was. Its frontage looks old, but in fact, it's modern, relatively speaking. It dates from about the late 1800s. 